For as long as chess has been played, the knight has probably been the trickiest piece on the board, and there are four unique qualities that make the knight so tricky. Firstly, it can jump over other pieces. Secondly, it switches color every single time it moves. Thirdly, it moves in an L shape. And last but not least, there's the notorious knight fork, which has befallen every chess player at some point in time. In this video, I wanted to show a geometric concept that can help you circumnavigate the knight in your own games. The idea is this concept of being two diagonals away. If you're two diagonals away from a knight, the knight can't actually harass your piece for three moves. And that's actually a really big deal because it can buy you time to do something else. So in this first example, the king is two diagonals away and there are no other pieces, so it's not a legal position, but you can see that the route to the king will take multiple moves. So one such example could be knight f7, knight d8, knight e6 with a check. Another example could be knight c4, knight b6, knight d5. But the point is that if the king stays where it is, the knight's not gonna touch it for a while. And that could be a big deal. Let's look at another such example. This position, I've actually added a knight and pawns to the fray, and so white's actually two pawns up. And you can see white's king is in check. Now, it could be really natural to step up and attack the knight again, but here the knight can actually check you really quickly when you're one diagonal away. You might actually lose valuable time. Um, I've seen it in many, many blitz games, bullet games, even classical games, where you might see like king e4, knight f6, king e5, and there's this zigzagging of checks that actually results in the loss of a pawn. In this position though, after knight d5 check, there's a simple solution. And if you've been paying attention, you'll know you can just step to the side with king f3, and now the knight can't bother the king for three moves, which means white can actually do something else, like get the pawns going or move another piece. And that is just a huge, huge deal. Let's go to another example. It's not just the king that has this power. So in this position, the material is actually technically equal because black has two pawns for the exchange, but it's white to move. And actually this knight on b2 is surprisingly limited after one move that is winning. And it's this move rook d4. Now the rook is two diagonals away. And so the knight can't actually get at the rook in a meaningful way. And it just so happens that with the knight close to the edge of the board, it's actually trapped. And so amazingly, rook d4 is a winning move. Now the king could go over and try to harass this rook to try and free up its own uh, knight. But now, after rook b2, the king is close enough where it's gonna actually attack the knight, and you also have this problem where the knight's still trapped, so there's nothing that can be done, and white is winning. The last example I wanted to show was something that happened in one of my own games, just to show you that there is real practical value here, and it's one where white is actually an exchange up, a pawn about to queen, but the white king is not super secure, and so, the idea is that white just has to kind of navigate some of these checks and then they're gonna win because if it's white's turn to move, the rook and queen can uh, be used with devastating effect against the open black king. And so black here actually played knight f2 check, trying to get in a check. Uh, I step to the side with king g1. And note that queen e1 is not a check here because the white queen is covering. That would be mate otherwise. And so black tried to give uh, another kamikaze check with knight takes h3. And here I thought for a little while, and this was the position I'd had in my mind from a few moves back. And I just want to double check, how do I avoid the checks? How do I avoid the checks? And if I take this knight, it may very well be winning, but the point is I have to tolerate queen c5 check, and my king gets tossed around quite a bit. In this position though, knowing the principles that we know, king f1 is actually a simple solution. And now with the king being two diagonals away from the knight, I know that it can't check me. And the queen no longer has a useful check because both e1 and f5 are efficiently covered. And so after the move king f1, black resigned. This idea of two diagonals away from the knight really can help you in your own games. And hopefully now you'll avoid a few knight forks that you otherwise wouldn't have. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.